Technology with Aligner Mathematics, and I'm the 2019 2020 president for Society of Women Engineers. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Chidara Intoon Kai Fine. I am a senior mechanical engineering technology major, and I am also the current president of the National Society of Black Engineers here on campus. So, today we'll be discussing why we need women in STEM. 28% of the women are in the science and engineering workforce. And those women that are between occupations are 60% make up social sciences, 48% make up biological and environmental life sciences, 15% make up engineering, and 26% make up computer and mathematical sciences. Those different influences, you know, influence for myself having the confidence to pursue a career um, in engineering, um, Dominion being backing me up with the internship and encouraging, um, you know, I met many people while I worked as an intern that encouraged me to um, continue to pursue to actually acquire my degree um, would be the things that I would say that um, really helped me and got me to where I am. <laughs> I wouldn't be a school teacher. <laughs> I wanted to teach business classes. And but my mom could see in me that I could explain things well about technology and computers. Like I grasped it very quickly and I could explain it to others and teach them how to do it. And so she's the one who said, Why don't you try, you know, information systems or technology? And mind you, when I got into college, I had already put on there education. Um, and so I had to change my major. But the other reason was because of the money, you know, it was, you know, you know, you get paid well. <laughs> um, this, is, um, this is real, it's reality. As far as an organization, I was a part of BDPA, which is kind of similar to the SWE, but it was for IT people, it's called Black Data Processing Associates. I think we had a chapter here, because I remember coming here for some stuff. Um, but I was the president of that chapter in college, and so that gave me the opportunity to see other women, other men of color um, in the fields that I was in and that I was pursuing, and could see what other people were doing, and could see what the different the different jobs, you know, because I'm in IT, but I'm not techie. Like I still call the help desk if my computer doesn't work, you know, but I can understand. <laughs> Control all the leads, see what happens. Seriously, <laughs> I can understand, you know, the, the terminology. Uh, we don't want to do anything. That's one thing my mom pushed me away from to make sure that I actually was okay in class and could beat beat the fear of being in class and not wanting to do that problem. So that stemmed me getting interested in math. Granted, I'm not in the direct STEM field, but I graduated with my accounting degree. I took some accounting classes in high school, and it, it was, I knew that that's where I wanted to go. I wanted to stay with numbers, do numbers on a daily basis. I didn't know where that would lead me in after for my career, but um, what ended up happening was an administrator at Virginia State. We were, we were really close. He um, led me into my job for the Depart Department of Defense, where I worked previously, and I was in the supply chain, and it just it just worked out to where a job opened at Dominion Energy, and I heard so many great things about the people who worked for Dominion Energy. Nothing, nothing bad at all, and I, and I applied. Because as a customer service manager, through the line, there was really nowhere else for me to go. 
um, because I didn't want to be a store manager. So it was, okay, I'll take this cut. And everyone, you know, said to me, it's such a great company to work for. So I figured I could work my way back up. Um, then once I took that cut and went to Dominion Energy, I uh, got divorced. So then it was, okay, I got two kids to take care of. I need to find a job that's going to pay for these kids. And that's how I got into, actually I started as a designer once I, after I finished the administrative part at Dominion. And I was never a girly girl. So I enjoyed being able to go out in the field and I didn't have to sit all day long in the office. I could be out in the field looking at the birds and the trees and still get paid for it. And I was like, <laughs> this is the job for me. And that kind of started it. So one, the professor telling me to apply to the events that happened in real life, you know, I didn't expect I would get a divorce. And then saying, okay, now I have this responsibility and how am I going to make sure that my children have what they have? You have to speak up. Because if you don't speak up, then things are going to continue. Don't quit. Okay, quitters never win, winners never quit. Okay, you don't want to give them the advantage that they drove you out because they offended you. One, two, offense is something that you have taken. You took offense. Don't let it bother you. Okay, you gotta have thick skin. All right, you get to corporate America, you gotta have thick skin. All right, so you just have to let that stuff roll off your back. Make sure you know your stuff. That, that's the key thing. You can't, they can't really deny when you know your stuff and when you can produce. They can't deny that. Um, you have to look at yourself as being unstoppable. That's really how I look at it. So it doesn't really matter if they think, you know, what they think necessarily. You know, I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna do my job, and they're gonna see that I, I know what I'm doing and that I can do the job and a lot of times things will take care of itself, you know. You may feel like people are against you, but they, it only takes one person to notice your talent and your gift to get you to that next level. So you always have to be on your P's and Q's. You always have to know your stuff. So now, you know, where you guys are right now is an opportunity for you to build that foundation. So when you get out there in corporate America, you know your stuff, you know. And like Joy said, you do have to work harder than other people sometimes, but there is a reward for that in the end. So don't let that discourage you. Don't let that break your confidence. Believe in yourself, and basically things will work out. Um, I have operations and construction. So I have 68 employees. Only two women are in the field with the rest of men. Um, and then I have three administrative staff. So I deal with it every day. And I'll just say one of the positions I had at the recycle shop I went into a group, it was about 22 men, some were older than I was, way older, so I've been with the company longer than I had been on the earth, um, and I walked in and I was now their supervisor. Well, these were electricians, I've never done electrical work. What are you going to do to supervise us? And someone asked me one day, what really is your role? And I said, my role is to look at the processes and find a more efficient way to get the work done. And you all are my resources. So I don't need to know how to do your job. I just need to understand what you do. And I went in and I sat with each of them and watched them do their work. And I asked a lot of questions. That's one thing that sometimes as women and then also as African Americans, we feel like we don't want to ask questions because someone may question why we got the role. Well, you ask questions and you learn. And you show that you're respecting the knowledge that they have. And then when the end comes, you know, when my year was up in that role, they were like, wow, we're really impressed because you're able to have a conversation and you can fully explain everything that happens at this site not having done any of the jobs that were there. The responsibility is in both in both of our hands, in men's hands and in women's hands. It's not, 
we can't just rely on them to do something, right? We have to be also our own advocate. Um, one thing I know for sure is that if, if, there, if we do something at work, draw attention to it, bring attention to it. Don't get it downplayed, you know, because, oh, Joy did that, she's a girl, you know, it's not that important. No, you know, make sure people know and recognize what you do at your job or in your career. Um, magnify it, you know what I'm saying? No matter what it is, hey, I did this. I put forth my time, my effort. As a man, my time, my effort. Um, one thing I do know, cause, and I wrote this down, I think it was talked about in the um, one of y'all's y'all videos, um, was <laughs> I think this also starts at home. I think um, I have a daughter, she's four, and it's like whatever she wants, whatever you wanna do, whatever you wanna do, you can do it. I think if we allow you all and people younger, your younger generation, to see women like us and the astronauts and the high, whatever that business lady was, that, that was amazing to me. Like, I can't even pronounce her job. But to have us see these things allows you to know, wait, there is a job that does that. There's something out there that matches things that I like and my passion that I can do. And oh, wait a minute, there's a black lady that's doing it and she's knocking it out of the park. So I think the more that we show people not just younger people, not just y'all, but even people at our jobs, hey, I can do this, right? Then they'll see, they need to see it. Look for opportunities to be the first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like we talked about, you know, like with the hidden figures of uh, women from, that worked at NASA. Look for opportunities to be the first. But I believe I was the first black female project manager in electric transmission. I don't know of anybody else. On the distribution side, you know, there were, um, you know, Edwina was a project manager, and I know other uh, women of color that were project managers, but I don't know of any, I don't even know other women on the electric transmission side that were part, that got that particular opportunity. Seek to be a pioneer, seek to be the first, and then after becoming the first, try to help other people and bring other people up into that role. Or I wish I had learned earlier in life is to ask for what you want, mm -hmm. whether that's in your personal life or your professional life. Mm -hmm. Don't assume that people know what you want. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them what you want. Um, and what's the worst they can say is no. Exactly. You'll survive now. We all have survived now. <laughs> but we all need to have someone that we can vent to when things are going wrong because you don't want to cry at work or you don't want to have those episodes when you're screaming and throwing a tantrum because then the men will say, that's why we don't put a woman in that position because they can't handle the stress. So you want that girlfriend, and sometimes it's a guy friend from work that you can call and say, hey, I need to meet you for lunch or you walk the park a lot and you just vent everything out. And then once you walk back into that office, you're straight. Make a plan and try to implement it, but it's okay if it doesn't go on that path. Things will work out. I mean, you made it to school. You might not have had a complete um, understanding and know where you were going when you got to school, but some of you are now seniors now and you, you made it there. So just because you didn't have it all figured out, it will work out. And then forgive yourself for your mistakes. Um, we all make mistakes. I'm, I'm sure I've made some, yeah, I'm sure I've made some mistakes today in my job. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, however, forgive yourself, learn from it, ask, ask someone if you don't know how to do something, and continue on.